Hello, this is a Skyscan training video on the morphological analysis of trabecular and cortical bone in the vertebra of a rat or a mouse. The principle is the same as with the analysis of the tibia or femur, the appendicular sites, shown in a separate video, except that in that case the reference level was the growth plate. In the vertebra you have two structures equivalent to the growth plate the cartilaginous end plates at both ends of the vertebral body and the uh, region of interest is delineated at both ends. This is a data set of the vertebral body, the, the vertebra, lumbar vertebra of a rat and we're going to look at the analysis of it. Now I'm going to increase the magnification by hitting shift and moving the mouse wheel to slightly enlarge the image. There are two stages to this process. First is to delineate the vertebral body. The vertebral body is the part at the bottom of the, the uh, ventral side of the vertebra which, on which we will focus our analysis following normal convention. Now, it is convenient to use um, a fixed shape for this, namely the ellipse. In the region of interest page we go to the drop menu of shapes and choose elliptic and it's, relatively, it's quite convenient, providing that the uh, vertebra is reconstructed in a uh, vertical orientation. We can place, uh, and by the way, the orientation is controllable in NRECON. You can control the, the uh, angle. Um, you can place an ellipse which conveniently cuts off the uh, vertebral body from the surrounding uh, processes at the point of narrowest uh, sort of neck connection. Now I do that at successive points along the vertebral body. At a certain point the vertebral body separates from the processes making the, uh, the process more straightforward. Every What you do is you insert drawn shapes at intervals. You go to the menu again and choose elliptic to reactivate the editing tool and position carefully the ellipse to um, represent the boundary of the vertebral body. So let's just take this both ends. Now we're in the clear just edit our ellipse once more. And we continue this process until we reach the end of the vertebral body, terminating in the uh, end plate structures. Once we reach this end, we right click on the slice and we select set to bottom or top of selection as appropriate. Let's continue the process in the other direction. another elliptical ROI. Again at this point you have to judge the point of bridging normally where the diameter is a minimum. and eventually this too will actually form a separate object at a certain point. The vertebral body will detach from the uh, neighboring processes. So this can be the upper extent, the upper limit of our region of interest. So again right click, set top of selection. Now hitting the spacebar I can animate through our region of interest just to confirm that our region of interest is approximately correct. Let's accelerate it slightly. Okay, having done this 
we at the region of interest page click on the second button save ROI and we will save this as VB standing for vertebral body that just saves the region of interest now we will save a data set from the region of interest setting a file a data set directory and a file name as appropriate this is a very important part of analysis with CT Analyzer once you have selected a volume of interest you make what is called a region of interest data set what we are doing right now which results in a data set of much smaller size which is much more fast and convenient to analyze We will now open this ROI dataset. Here is the open dataset button. Here is the dataset that we have just created. Now we have to delineate a separation between the trabecular and the cortical bone. But to begin with, we have to choose a range of slices that we are going to analyze. Now, we saw in the analysis of the vertebra, or uh, the analysis of the femur or the tibia, the criteria that we used for a growth plate. Well, what criteria do we use for these end plates? This is up to you to a certain extent. I will show you a criteria that I use, but you may be able to think of a better one. As we move into the, into the end plates at both end, there comes a point at which you can judge that the trabecular structures account for only about half of the cross-sectional area of the vertebral body and half of the area is accounted for by growth end plate related structures in this case I would choose level 855 at the top end and approximately level 140 at the other end the level at which approximately speaking half of the cross-section is trabecular like structures and half of it is end plate related structures. Now, having identified those reference levels we move a fixed number of slices inwards away from that reference level. In this case I choose uh, the number of slices 70. So from 140 where we have a 50-50 division of trabecular structures and end plate I move up to slice 210 where we have all practically all of the cross section accounted for by trabecular structures. This will be the bottom margin of our volume of interest. At the top margin, in the same way, we found that slice 855 was the point where we have approximately, by our visual judgment, 50% of trabecular structures, 50% of growth plate related structures. So we move inwards by 70 slices. In other words, down to slice number 785. And here again, we have the cross section fully occupied by mature trabecular bone. This will be the top of our selection. Having defined our selected range, and it's indicated here in the projection image, we then move to the region of interest page and we perform drawing just with the left hand uh, mouse button of the delineation between the trabecular and the cortical bone. Starting at the top level Note that we leave a margin between the endocortical boundary and the trabecular bone to make sure that we don't include any cortical bone in the trabecular region. Excluding a small amount of trabecular around the side is not such a problem. Now in the vertebra this becomes somewhat subjective at certain points of the vertebral body where the trabecular bone extends right into the neighboring vertebral processes. At this point my approach is to in fact follow the outside of the ellipse over the part where the trabecular bone extends out of 
the elliptical region of interest. Whatever approach you choose to take, you should just apply it consistently to all the data sets that you analyse. So you'll notice that I'm obviously not editing every single slice. I'm leaving an interval of between 20 and 40 cross sections, approximately, between the slices that I edit. And intervening slices are automatically interpolated by the software. If you feel that you would like to edit uh, an ROI shape, you can click on this button here and a row of dots will appear and you can move these dots to edit a drawn shape or you can even right click and remove these nodes. And you can alternate between a join the dots viewing mode or a mode in which you have corner points. Okay, let's conclude this ROI drawing. Now in the rat, the uh, surrounding cortical bone is relatively thick, but what you'll notice if you apply this method to the mouse is that the uh, cortical bone surrounding the vertebral body is actually quite thin, is of a similar thickness to the trabecular bone itself. And you also find that there are holes where blood vessels enter the vertebral body, and you have to essentially uh, interpolate your um, trabecular cortical boundary across those holes, but experience will uh, make this quite a straightforward process to do. As in all uh, of these rather subjective ROI drawings, it should only be one analyst who performs the drawing in any given uh, experiment to avoid inter-user um, variability. But with experience, this can be done in a relatively short time. Include the bottom and the top uh, cross-sectional slices in your selected range as edited shapes. So we can briefly inspect our trabecular region of interest and then save it as a ROI file. Second button, I will add the letters TRAB to save that as a trabecular ROI. This is just the ROI file de defining where the region of interest is. If I delete it, I can load it back by reloading that particular file. How do I make a cortical region of interest. Do I have to make another drawing operation? Fortunately not. There's a simpler solution. I click on this button here, which inverts the region of interest. Now it is the surrounding bone which is selected and the bone in the center, the trabecular bone, is excluded. Having inverted it, I simply save again. This time not as the trabecular, but as the cortical region of interest. Having done this, I can move on to the analysis. Since we're on the cortical bone, let's start with that. Binary images, let's identify an appropriate threshold value, something like, let's say, 85. And I'm going to move on to the custom processing. Once this is finished loading, we will simply perform despeckle operations to remove these noise dots by the thresholding of 85 using the threshold plugin under the internal tab. Now, under despeckle, 
I will remove white speckles less than, let's say, 30 voxels, 3D space. These white dots should disappear. And I can do the same to remove the black dots. Now, to analyze the trabecular bone, we do exactly the same thing. We just take the trabecular region of interest, apply, in this case, a similar threshold, go to custom processing, and do the thresholding and the despeckling as before. In the custom processing page, these final three buttons show you the image, the region of interest, and the image inside the region of interest. Now we are ready to move on to do the morphometric analysis of the bone, such as using the 3D analysis in this button here. Thank you very much.